Wait, not while I'm saying action, though. <laughs> Welcome to my salon. Come on in. No, that was bad. <laughs> Hi, everyone. It's me, April, with Air 101. Hello. Okay. Hi, everyone. It's April with Hair 101, and I'm finally doing my salon tour because you asked for it. And my salon is small but it gets the job done. This is where the salon starts. Come on in and I will show you a round. And I'm gonna tell you the truth. I had to clean my salon because it was kind of grody, like the, the closets and stuff. But So now I spent a little time to clean them and that's what took me so long. That's why I took forever showing you took forever to show you this. So. Okay, so first of all, this painting was painted by one of my sweet neighbors and um, she gave it to us because we helped her out with some death videos and some, her name's Carol and she's an amazing artist and I love it. So that's why that's there. And then we have my color cabinet and this was really scary and I had to work really hard to clean it out. But this is how I had it originally and every time I organize it, I organize it like this and so it's really nice. I have all of my colors stacked up here and I always put them lightest to darkest. And so then when I'm mixing up color, I know that if I need a three, it's in the three row. And if I need a four, it's in the four row, so on and so forth, all the way down to like the 12 A's. And then I have my Vermisi backup bleach over here. And so as soon as I, um, my men's color line, I love the men's color line. This is awesome for just like keeping it natural and get, getting rid of the gray. It covers gray and it's a five minute hair color. This stuff's awesome. Seriously, five minutes. It has like a five minute processing time and then there's like a, there's like another little neutralizer after you have like the activator with it that you just kind of wash in after you've washed the hair out and it seals in the color really good. And so yeah, it's really fast. So that's something awesome for men. Stop. And then... Put this right there. Is it too loud? Just when you look at me, it's sounding like something. When you're looking that way, it's sounding like different. If it's below you, it'll be better, I think. Okay. Wait, doing that does nothing. I'm not pointing it at you. There, okay. You're rocking it, rolling. All right, so these are all of my colors. As soon as I open the color, like if I were to open this 7NN, I would take it out of the box and rip the tab off, and I keep all of the tabs somewhere. Oh, I think they're in here. Yeah, they're in here. So I keep all of the tabs in here, and then that way I know what color I'm missing out of my color line, so I can go back to the beauty supply and then pick back out the right colors. So I rip off the tab as soon as it's open because I always want to have like an unopened box and then I put the, this is where it gets kind of messy. I put all of the opened containers down here in this lovely mess of organized chaos. And I don't really have a, this is not organized. So most of the time when I think of a color, I'm like, oh, I need a 6N. So like come over here and dig through all of my already opened ones and sometimes I have to get creative. Like if I don't have a 6N up there because I've been lazy, I have to sometimes mix like a 5 and a 7 together to make a 6. But usually it's okay. So yeah, I just kind of pick through these and sometimes if I need to get rid of one, like if I'm doing like a 3 gold beige and I just want to get rid of a little bit of this brown red, I squirt a little bit in there. I don't know, that's bad. I, you shouldn't tell people that, but. Yeah, I try to get rid of these and I try to make sure that I use these first before I open a new one. So if I'm, if I'm going to open a 5 and I'll look through all of these and make sure I don't have any 5Ns or 5NNs, like I do have one right there, before I open a new one. So that's that. And then these are kind of tricky too because I find myself going like this through all of these. I really need to organize some more, but I keep all of my shades of cues and toner 
the Shade DQ line in these little tubs. And for a while I was like riding on the top of them, but then I lost that pen, so I just stopped doing it. All right, so I keep all of my bowls and brushes in here after I wash them. And let's see what's in this drawer. Oh, fun colors. Fun colors, love these. These are the Urban Shock and they smell good. These smell like, like the purple smells like grape. Mmm, love it, I wanna eat them. And let's see, pink I think smells like a, like raspberry or strawberry or something. Yeah, it's really good. So yeah, don't eat them, but they smell really, really good. And these are temporary, intense temporary color. So usually you bleach out the hair or if you have like a really, really blonde girl, you can just put it on, but it sticks better if it's bleached out first. It stays in there better. Um, and then I have some of these purples. I have a lot of purples and pinks and reds. And I had a blue at one point. I don't know where that one is. Oh wait, no, it's right here. Here's the blue. So yeah, and there, ooh, what's back here? Okay, this is funny actually. So um, I learned how to shave, like straight edge shave men's faces in barbering school. And I love doing it and I haven't done it for a really long time, but I'm gonna do a video on that one day. I always say I'm gonna do all these videos and sorry guys, it takes me forever to get them out, but I, that will be one that I do. Maybe by Halloween or something. But um, after I graduated school, I could not find the blades to replace my the straight edge razor anywhere. So I got online and ordered a case of them. So now I have like, I have these things like coming out my ears. They're everywhere. Like I find them all over in my salon. Just like, oh, there's another blade of razors and I don't use them anymore. But one day I will like shave everyone's face in the entire world. And so I'm gonna keep them. Just building up a pack rat right here. I have problems. Okay, so we have back in here another pair of Andy's Master Clippers, and I don't even know if these work, actually. I don't know why I have these. Let's plug them in and see. <laughs> I probably dropped them a long time ago, and they probably will like blow up and explode when I plug them in or something. No, they work. Why? Why did I buy those ones if I had these ones? I don't even know. Anyway, my backup, this is my backup pair, I guess. So we're gonna stick them back in the deep dark hole that I never see. And forget about them for another 10 years. Okay, they probably don't cut very well, I don't know. Oh, and who, what? Q-tips and cotton that I haven't touched for probably five years. And I don't even know why it's in there, but in case you ever need some cotton, I guess. And all of my blazing. Okay, so the blazing has two lines that I love. They have the high light system and then the low light system. The low light system is awesome for coloring back hair from blonde. Like you don't have to mix in a filler with this stuff, it's awesome. So if you have someone that's like a, like a 10 or lighter even, like a platinum, and they're like, oh, I wanna put some brown highlights back in, or low lights back in my hair, uh, it's kind of scary to do that because I've had a lot of people even be like, I'm scared because it'll turn muddy. If you're scared of that, these will not go muddy. They will not. They are formulated to be put back on like white and light hair. So they had one, one of them is like an eight natural ash or something. And it is like the prettiest color over. It's that pretty like ashy dark blonde that is really, really hard to get. And I love it. So I use that one a lot. And I don't even have it right now because I used it up and I forgot to buy a new one because I didn't have a tab because I need to like rip off the sticker or something. Oh, maybe that, see it tells me on there. Oh, I'm working on it guys, sorry. I'm trying to be more organized. And then down here we have a bunch of developers, like all these different kinds of developers. Someone asked me what brand I use. I just buy these cheap ones because I can get them in these humongous gallons like this and and then I can like just refill my little bottle so I don't have to lift the whole big heavy gallon over my head and dump it in. Oh my gosh, I have a lot of 40 volume. Oh, accidentally bought the same gallon. Okay, so yeah, I just buy the, for my cream peroxide for my Redken. Yeah, it says on the box, it's like, you have to use Redken developer, but I don't and my colors turn out great, so and it's like a fourth of the price, so I just buy these. 
However, I always use the Shades EQ for the shades because it's like a totally different peroxide than these and it's clear. And so this is like a must. If you're using the Shades EQ, you have to use that. Um, same with like the men's line. Like this is a men's activator neutral. Like the, you have to use the, there are certain color lines that you absolutely have to use their brand, but on the main, like the color fusion and stuff, I don't, I just use like regular cream developer. Okay. These are my bleaches. I like the blazing. This is for the, the blazing, the scruples blazing. And then this is just my go-to blonde bleach. I love this stuff. It lightens very, very quickly and the tone is really pretty. It, just, it gets it to that pale, pale yellow really easy. So I love those. Oh, I think that's it in this cupboard. Oh, we're done with oh wait, I forgot about the Sticky Master. I don't even, I've never even opened this. It's one of those stupid infomercials. I bought it on, on like a kiosk or something. And I was like, oh, that will be awesome for my salon and like get all the hair up. Let's see if it gets like hair all, oh, it's way sticky. I, yeah. I think I even have one of these that's like, like big somewhere. Oh, it's right here. This <laughs> is the big one. Yeah, it's, it, here's the problem. So like I was way excited about this because I was like, oh, after I sleep. I sweep and sweep and sweep and there's still hair on the floor. Like I can't get the hair off the floor. So I thought this would just be like awesome and I could just, after I swept, just like go like this really fast. Problem was is that I would do like one little swipe and it was not even sticking anymore because it was so disgusting. So I guess I just have to mop every day. Anyway, so yeah, that's, it's like clever idea and you're supposed to be able to like wash it off and then do it again, but it takes too long to like let it dry. So, oh yeah, there's a big one. Okay, yeah. All right, so that's enough of the sticky master. Sticky sucker, made more like stupid invention. Um, this cabinet's from Ikea. This is just something I found somewhere one time. I don't even know where that came from. Okay, let's move on. Let's go over here. What do you use it for? Oh. It's here so I can mix my color. So I put, I put my bowl and then like I have somewhere to work to mix all my color up. That's where all the mixing magic happens. It's just a pedestal. Um, this is my chair. It spins and it spins slow and fast. Just kidding. Um, somebody, seriously, somebody, whoever you are, ask, asked me to teach them how to raise and lower the chair. I would like to take this opportunity to show you how to raise and lower a chair. You push down on the bar and it raises and you hold the bar down and it lowers. And that my friends is pretty much about it. Oh, there's one more little feature on the chairs. If you push up, it locks the chair so you can't spin it anymore. And that is good to use whenever you have them in the shampoo bowl because if they shift their weight a little bit and their head's stuck in the shampoo bowl, then they can like start to drift away and their head's like twisting off of their bodies and it's creepy. So just make sure that you lock it when you do the shampoos if you have a chair like this. And another little thing on my chair is if you push this forward, it leans back. And I have an attachment up here that I you can stick on here. I think this is like a tattoo chair really, but it works. And if you notice these little wood blocks here, it's because when I bought this salon tattoo chair, the arms came in to like right here. And so if your booty was any bigger than mine, you like barely squoze into the chair. And I'm not, I, I'm not a pretty tiny person and I could barely fit into the chair. So I went and got some blocks and drilled holes through them and got bigger screws and then like lengthened out my chair so that normal sized people could fit in it. Um, so yeah, that's good. But it's, it's been working for me for like, I don't know how, how long I've had this chair. It's been like eight years. It's still working, still strong. Nobody's broken it off. It's a little wobbly. We should probably tighten those up. But other than that, this one's tight. 
Just this one's wobbly. It's probably because it's the one that's out here and everyone pushes on it to get out. Um, this is my rolly cart thing. I like to have this separate because I put all my color on it and my foils when I'm weeding. And, um, and I, it's full of like a bunch of junk that I hardly ever use. Well, there's, there are two top drawers I actually use quite a bit. So I put all of my clean washed combs in this top one. And I only stick clean washed combs in there. How did that get in there? Sorry. And that way I know if I need to get a new comb, if I've dropped a comb when I'm cutting hair, I can just reach in here and grab one and they're all clean. And then as soon as I have my dirty combs, I stick them straight in the barbicide. And then, and then they go from the barbicide and I wash them out in the sink onto a towel and they dry and then I stick them in the drawer. So, and same with the clips. I barbicide the clips and then I put them back in here. So these are clean clips, clean combs. And then I have my sticks for waxing and some hair elastics. Um, let's see, down here I have my bobby pins, my neck strips, and some gloves, and, and wraps, and another one of these stupid inventions. This is so, I'm, yeah, I'm just gonna throw this away. It's like the dumbest thing I've ever bought. Okay, and these are a must. I hate to tell you, but I cut my finger quite often. I guess I just get carried away and kind of slice into my hand. But these are so awesome because you wash your hand off and sanitize all the stuff that you're reusing and then stick these awesome waterproof band-aids on there and then you can keep cutting and wash your hair even and like it acts like skin. It's really cool. They're the only band-aids I've ever found that I can keep going and not have like leaking and stuff couple clipper, clipper oils, some Vaseline for tinting eyebrows. Okay, let's move to the next drawer. Looks like that bad on there. We go. So I just have uh, shampoo caps and these are awesome. I haven't used one of these for a long time. So these are for highlighting. You stick them on like this. And then you like, oh yeah, that's awesome. And then you can go swimming or you can uh, highlight the hair. So they come with all these little hooks. And then you, I don't know where the hooks are. I think they're up here. Yes. I only have like a bajillion of these hooks because I think they give you one hook for every single cap that you buy. But you just stick it in the hole and, and you pull it through. Yeah, I'll show you how to do that later. Oh no, now my headband fell off. Oh dear. Okay. Crazy. Okay, we'll put this back. Oh wait, it's been on my head. I don't even know if I should do that. Probably have to throw it away. That's okay, I never use them anyway. All right, so, we'll have to sanitize that. Okay. Now, down here I have, let's see, I have some foils. Those are the only foils I have left. I have to go buy some more right now. And this is from when I was like in junior high. This is so old, but it is so little and I never ever use it. So I wouldn't go out and buy like a new, nicer, professional one this little because I haven't really found a use for it except for curling all of my hair like this and making it into a giant afro is so fun. Like, that's why I keep it. But then the like heat protector spot fell off and so I was like wrapping it in cotton and like tape to keep my thumb from burning off when I would do it. But I love it and I'm not gonna get rid of it because it even has like the little dot that tells you when it's hot. Like, like you can't touch it. I don't know, don't put any of that in there. Anyway, yeah, maybe I'll curl my hair with this tiny little curling iron for one of my, that's what I'm gonna do tomorrow, I should do that. Okay, and this is something that is, somebody left this when I cut off all their hair and it's ridiculous and I don't even know whose it is and I will never use it, so I think I'm gonna throw that away actually. Sorry, whoever, it's, if that's yours and, oh look, a candy. I think, no way, there was hair inside of the candy. That is, it's incredible actually. That's disgusting. 
That shows how long it's probably been down here. Okay, that's everything. Oh wait, there's something under here. Another pair of clippers. Oh, these were the first pair of clippers I ever had and I know that because my name's carved into them. At school they made you carve your name into everything because everyone had the same stuff and we'd lose it or someone would steal it. And I bet you these ones don't work. I'm gonna try. Oh yeah, see they're totally, they're jammed. They don't work. So yeah, I don't know why I keep those because they're completely toast, but oh well, that's it in there. Let's see. This is a bracelet my daughter Ambry made me and it does not belong in the salon, but I will just put it on right now. I don't know why it's down here. Okay. So now to my station. I love this station. I'm so excited that I decided to spend a bunch of money on this because when I was buying stuff for my home salon, it was tempting to go cheap and and it was like, oh, how cheap can I do it? And I like, like with this chair, like, oh, I'll just buy the cheaper chair and put some blocks of wood on the arms to make it so it fits normal sized people. But I'm glad I did that because it was like worth saving the money there. But I'm glad that I got the right cabinets because I love how much storage I have. And I love that my sink and my chair is all right here. I don't have to have like two different spots that I'm going back between. And I absolutely love like all these little features. I have a pull-out tray. I've actually never really used the pull-out tray, except for maybe when I'm doing updos, because I'm like standing over here sometimes and use it. Maybe twice ever, but it's still cool. Like I, I have a pull-out tray, so that's awesome. And then up in here, it has storage for towels. I have clean towels and shampoo and conditioner, and it's awesome to just have it all right here. Love that. And then, okay, I keep my capes, all of my clean aprons and capes up here. And I have several because you need to either, okay, I don't love using neck strips. I just think that as soon as any water touches them, they kind of just like melt and get nasty anyway. So you just need to use clean capes every time you put one on someone else, it needs to be clean. So I have several in case I'm doing like five or six people a day, I can just go through my capes and then wash them all at the end of the day and be ready to go the next day. Um, and then I have all my color books up here so I can have consultations and just kind of bring all these down and show what the hair will look like in their hair. That would be awesome if I did some red. Okay, these are fun because you can take them out and put them in people's hair and then you get to also see what they look like against brown hair because these are made to be like red highlights. And they even give you like techniques cards in here. Really, really fun. Love this, the red lights from Matrix. These are really fun because they lift and deposit. That's what I like about these. And it's like intense. It's like fire truck red. Love those. Um, so yeah, all of my color books, my color wheel. Everyone keeps asking where I got this. It's just came with my blazing when I bought it in the kit. So I don't know where to get that. So sorry. <laughs> oh yeah. Is this plugged in? Oh my gosh, it's not even plugged in. I can't even remember the last time I listened to music up here. Look how dusty it is. I don't listen to it. This is so gross. I don't even know what to do with this. Oh my gosh, look at my fingers. That's sick. Oh wow. Okay. Just need a towel. Well, I'm glad that we took care of that problem. Okay, and then this is the, the hide all of my junk from the world cabinet. And I just keep all of the products that I'm using in here and my barbicide and my mirror. There we go. So I can let people see the back of their head. I just have like fake hair feathers, you know, stuff like that, the normal things. Ooh, eyelash and eyebrow tint. This is awesome stuff. I don't even know how to say it. Ro, rocks, rogues. I don't know. Um, but these are really cool. You only you just like process it for like one or two minutes on eyebrows or eyelashes. And I have a black and a brown. Um, 
this is an awesome way to like add on a little bit of um, money too to a uh, to like increase your sales a little bit I mean you wouldn't want to do it if they didn't need it but a lot of the time when people are going darker and their eyebrows are really really light it's a good idea to darken them just to frame their face a little bit and to match their hair color but I wouldn't suggest just sticking the hair color that you're mixing up in the bowl on their eyebrows because that has dangerous stuff in it you don't want to deal with that around their eyes and it lifts and deposits you don't need to lift out eyebrows it's this is deposit only it's made for eyebrows use the right stuff um yeah just a bunch of product and some gum in case I ever need some fresh breath because I'm like right in people's faces all the time um, and then this is a drawer that has my cutting stuff in it and it even has like a little key that I can lock up just in case I don't trust the spiders in my house. I don't even know. Like, I guess if I was in a salon and I didn't want people to steal my shears, that'd be good. But I was just pretty excited when I found the key to this yesterday because I didn't even, I've never used it, but I have it still. Um, here's the straight edge razor I was telling you about. And I haven't used it in forever, but I still remember how to do it. And I think I'm still, I was like really good at shaving faces. I was, I didn't like cut anyone's face off at all. Like I, I made a couple guys bleed one time, but like nothing bad. So like I will do a video on this and hopefully I don't cut anyone's face off, but uh, we have all small things in my bum box, bum equipment and a business card holder full of other people's business cards, not mine. And these sharps. So when you change out your razor blades, you need to stick them in a sharps container because you can't just throw them in the garbage because that could cut animals or small children or anyone. And it's just not safe or sanitary. So you keep them in these little boxes and then you have to dispose of them properly. Um, yeah, these are both very heavy because I do not know how to dispose of them properly yet. And so they just keep getting fuller and fuller and fuller. And one day they will be all the way full and I will have to figure it out. And I'm going to wait till that day because I'm a very busy woman and I don't want to deal with it right now. Um, hair extension beads. I use this little like nail brush to like clean off the extra hair on my clippers before I sanitize them. And... All my shears, I think you guys have pretty much seen all my shears, but I'll show them to you again. These are the ones I cut with most of the time. They're five and a half inch. I don't know the, the brand on them because they're kind of just like not, they don't even make them anymore. These are the ones I got in a hair school and I don't really use these at all anymore. Um, my awesome thinning shears that I got in hair school that still work great. They are the 4420 Taper Find from the Economy Supply Company in Whittier, California. Awesome. Love those. I use the Feather Razor, made in Japan. I shouldn't say it like that. Made in Japan. Love this razor. And my Fun Chunky Chunk Shears that are the same brand as my... Shears, I bought these together, like at the same time, but it has a RA on them and I don't, don't know where that is from, but I like them. They're really good. I think I spent like 300 on these and like 350 on these. So that's all I remember. And this is a really old razor. It's just like the cheapest one you can get from Sally's. Um, and the, like the little handle broke off and this, I just don't use this and probably never will again, but it's here. Okay. And in here we have brushes. I keep my brushes in here after the clean them and the clipper guards and like accessories to my blow dryer, random pieces of equipment that I don't know even what they are. And change, just in case someone needs change. I have my hair chalks for fun. Um, my blow dryer diffuser. Ooh, oh yeah, I forgot about this. This is awesome. So this is like the little recipe cards we made in hair school. This is like an artifact, it's so old. 
Um, ooh, I forgot about these. So it like tells you all this for like a scalp treatment, all the scalp ma manipulations. Oh, I'm going to have to show you guys how to do this because I actually kind of forgot how to do this because I don't really do a ton of, like I do it when I'm shampooing people's hair, but like a uh, scalp treatment, they feel so good. Like we would fall asleep and start snoring in school when we were doing them on each other because it just felt so good. I don't know. I'm going to show you how to do that. Yeah, it just kind of goes through and tells you like how to do a manicure. Step one, step two. Awesome. I think these were like the, the cheat sheets to help us get ready for the state boards test. So good. I'm glad I still have that. That's fun. Okay. And then this is a little pop out. It has all of my equipment, all of my tools for cutting and styling hair. So I have my clippers. I forgot to wash those. Those are bad. Um, a three barrel weaver, which I never hardly ever use and a big curling iron and a regular size curling iron, like a one and a fourth inch. And I have my flat iron. This is such a cheap flat iron. One day I'll get a nice one. I need to like let it break though. I, I really do. Like I believe that you should use things until they suck so bad that you want to throw it away anyway or until it breaks. And most of the time I can deal with things until they break. And so that's why I have some old stuff, but it's stuff that still works good. So I mean the flat iron works pretty good. It just kind of like isn't my favorite. It's not the nicest one. So I'll just like keep using it until it dies or until I find someone to give it to or something. Um, my ginormous broken round brush that I love that I need to clean. And my favorite blow dryer ever, the GHD. Love this blow dryer. Love this blow dryer. It's wonderful. Um, that's everything in here. And I love that all the cords and everything can be hidden because in my old salon we had the holes in the top of the countertop and everything would kind of like hang over and all the cords would hang on the bottom and people would trip over them and it was hard to sweep the hair up underneath all the cords and it was like a nightmare. So that was one of the biggest selling points for this cabinet was that it had the hidden clean looking cords. Um, this is where I keep my barbicide. Oh, and I just, right, hold on here. Okay, I just need to cut or throw all this barbicide out now because there was a hook in it. I'm going to show you how to fill up some barbicide. Okay. I try to leave the water running really slowly because if you go too fast, it gets too bubbly and frothy at the top and then you can't get enough water in there. So you fill it up with clean water and then you wipe the bottom off because uh, one time a barbicide jar sat right here and slowly, slowly hairline fracture plastic leaked uh, for who knows how long and swelled all of the wood in my cabinet. It's really sad. It kind of water damaged all of it. So I got a new one obviously, but it was really sad for me to realize that my cabinet was like warped. And then you do just like a cap full of the barbicide and it shouldn't be super dark blue they you just need it to be like a really maybe a little bit more than that it was a little cap it should just be like a really light baby blue color like that and then you need to cut you need to change it like every like every time I every day I put them in there and they're full and then when like I dump them out and I change it you don't just like pick the combs out and put dirty combs back in it change the water it's gross if you don't all right, so I'm gonna leave those in there because I need to wash them better, but. Okay, so that's that. And oh, here's, here's a fun one. This is my only open like twice a year drawer. No, just kidding, I open it more often than that. It has all my waxes in it and like my, I open it a lot for this, <laughs> dust it off. Um, my client data profile organizer. <clears throat> Let's see. So uh, this is what I meant by when you like need to keep detailed records of all your clients because I'm not going to show you who this is, but I know the name, the address, and the phone number in case you move your salon or 
need to send out birthday cards or whatever, you can put their preferred appointment day, their hobbies, what they're allergic to, the, their favorite hair care products. Fill this out, get to know your clients. And then on the back, you have a log of all the services you've done on them. So you do the date, what you did on them. And then I always include like how I mix their colors. So if I did like a high lift natural with 40 volume, and then what I charged them because it's sometimes it's tricky to remember what you normally charge that person. And then if you've raised your prices to have to explain to them why it's more than last time, or if they can't even remember what it was last time, it's good to have it written down. So just make sure you do that. This is coming in handy a lot and I don't use it as much as I need to because sometimes I just fought out forget, but it's super convenient to have all that information. Um, what else is in here? All oh, this, this is so awesome. I haven't used this since hair school. The derma wand, the derma wand. Um, honestly, I'm pretty sure that the technology does exist that they claim that's in this. And I'm pretty sure that it does actually really work, but I couldn't get over the smell of burning flesh that happens when you use this thing. And I'm going to show you what this thing does. It's actually really scary to me because it has like crazy electric shock ability. Okay. So you plug it in and then like this little dial. Oh, it might be broken. Oh no, it's not. You can see the fire in there. It's scary. And you're supposed to stick this on your face. Okay, I'm pretty sure there was like some lotion. I don't even remember how to use this thing. Um, I'm gonna do it though. I'm pretty sure you were supposed to put some, oh, that's too high, I'm gonna start on the one because I'm a boob. Um, you're supposed to put like cream or something on your face and then you like, oh, it stings a little. Okay, here we go, I'm just gonna, it's supposed to get rid of wrinkles and stuff. Okay, that freaking hurts. <laughs> Ow, okay, wait, I'm gonna go for it, it stings too. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's on the one. Okay, it's not as bad as I thought. Oh, it actually, oh, and it stinks like burning flesh. Okay, let's do it on, maybe I can do it on the five because the one was okay. <laughs> yeah. No, that's not bad either, the five. Let's see, should I take, turn it all on? Yeah, I'm not gonna go up to nine because I don't want to burn my face off. But yes, uh, the derma wand. The Derma Wand, take away all of your wrinkles and have amazing skin if you want to smell like death. Um, but yeah, I think that they even have like a new version of this out that's maybe not as dead face smelling, but even right now I'm kind of getting sick smelling my own face. It's gross. But I think it does work. I think it's really good for your skin and um, if I ever used it more than twice, and got over the smell, I think that I would have a lot less wrinkles right now. It'd be a lot prettier, but oh well. Who cares? Those are gross. I'm not going to show you those. So uh, this is like all my wax stuff. Oh, wait. Oh, the petal. The petal. So um, in my first house, my first salon, I had an amazing vacuum, like a hair vacuum, and it was a little cabinet, and you could sweep the hair up to it, and then just, you step on this pedal, and all the hair just magically got sucked up the shop vac, and it was like the coolest, most amazing thing, and I, we moved, and then moved again, and it either was lost, or stolen, or misplaced, or put in like a storage unit that we never got, I don't even know what happened to it, this is the only part of it that I could find, and it's so sad to me because it was like a big, huge shop vac in a box, and I'm keeping it just in case one day I find it. <laughs> oh, that's so dumb. It's ridiculous, but, or no, 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 I remember why I was gonna keep it, because it plugs into like a shop vac, and if I ever bought another one, then I would have the pedal, because I don't think that like shop vacs come with the pedal. It's really unrealistic of me, and I understand that, but it's something that's, I guess it's more sentimental and I'm keeping it. I'm gonna stick it back where I found it. Um, these are cool. These little rings, like, they go around your wax pot. Here, I'll show you over here. So they help keep your wax pot clean. I need to heat this up, but these are like the blue beads that I was talking about when you buy the Serapil Blue Wax. They come in these little, like, 
M&M form. And you stick them in the wax pot and then when you heat it up, it melts it all down and makes it creamy again. But yeah, so this is really awesome to keep your the dripping down off of your wax pot. So it helps clean up. Um, what else do I have in here? I think that's about it. Just like the oil and the blue for the waxing and this awesome numbing spray. Ooh, I should numb my face and then use the derma wand. That maybe I'll try that sometime. But it, no, I won't. That's weird. Uh, cooling wax. This stuff's kind of cool. They just sent me this when I got some new wax. It's called Wax Busta Pot Cleaner. Um, it's pretty much orange. What is that stuff called? Goo Gone. It's pretty much Goo Gone. It smells like the same, but it has a little bit more pleasant smell than Goo Gone, but I think it's like the same exact ingredient. It kind of smells like orange. But it worked really good. I liked it. This is my beads, the, bl the blue circle beads that come in this little package. Um, and that's everything in here. Let's go to the next. The next cabinet cabinet is like, it's like Christmas time because it's full of all of my crazy decorative paints and feathers and Christmas tree head and Fourth of July gels. This is all of the fun, awesome, crazy stuff. Like extra hair wefts, just in case I want to add some hair somewhere. Um, hair extension glue, a hair extension glue gun. Every color imaginable of this cheap hairspray that I got for 25 cents a pop in the clearance bin one day. And I've used it a lot for crazy hair days and stuff. And that's about it, just the crazy stuff. This is my fun. When we open this cupboard, we know we're gonna have fun. This is the party time cupboard. All right, and what else do we have? Oh, this is really nice. I love my pad, because it's on tile, cement, tile, whatever. This saves me, like standing on this soft cushion. I usually wear shoes, but no, I, and I need to paint my toenails. But yeah, this is nice. Um, well, let's move over here. So we have a fridge. It's full of like beverages for my clients, just in case we have to break out the sparkling cider and celebrate. That doesn't actually normally happen. I don't know why those are in there, but I have some Diet Coke. So I have some Diet Coke drinkers. It's not me. I don't like Diet Coke. No, I'm not hating on people that do, but I just, I don't like Nature Sweet. It tastes bad to me. Some guavas, yeah, just drinks. And hair, oh great. It's in the air, it flies everywhere. So if you want a hairy water, you know where to find it. It's right here, my salon. Um, and this is my shelf that has some products on it. But no, I'm not selling these. These are, I'll tell you honestly, I don't have the, um, the sales tax ID number to sell the products, and so I don't really sell products, but I buy the ones that I haven't opened yet, and I set them here, and then when birthdays and Christmas come, I like come down here and I just shop in my own salon, and everyone loves it because they get professional hair care products for their birthday. Rochelle, it's your birthday today, and I got you a big bottle of BioSilk. Happy birthday! That's not a joke, she really did get it. And I will prove it to you later, but I don't need to. She'll, she'll comment and be like, I really got some bio silk. Cause that's what she's getting for her birthday. And it really is her birthday today. Um, and yeah, pretty much that's the only thing that I use those for is birthday and Christmas presents. Every once in a while, someone will take one, but. Um, booster seat for the little kids, stick it right there. Hop on up, they have a cup holder and a snack holder just in case they want to snack on some hair. The little ones like to eat the hair on their suckers sometimes. Um, this is my back bar refills. Um, and I, this is just an empty bottle because it had a pump on it. And like one time I needed a pump for a bottle and I didn't have one and it was really frustrating because I had to keep picking up the big heavy bottle in the shower and dumping it in my hand. And so now I have this like crazy weird thing where I keep bottles that have pumps on them. I am turning into my mother. That's a, I'm, that's a good thing. I actually really love my mom. 
Okay, cut all of that out. <laughs> no, my, okay. So yes, I do have some tendencies to collect things that don't really make any logical sense, but it's okay. Um, some things to read and some idea books just to get some inspiration in case you want to look like this or this. Oh, her makeup's really pretty actually. I like that. Okay. I just got some inspiration just by opening it once. And that's about it. And then here we have the, the hood dryer. Uh, that's, yeah, you pull down the thing and it works. And then when you push it up, it turns off. And so that's the salon. Um, I do want to show you one little thing. No, I won't show it to you. Oh, and then here's the bathroom, but that's nothing special. It has a mattress in the crib, the crib mattress. Too. Okay. So yeah, there's like a little bathroom attached to my salon for my clients. And that's it. It's a really small space. There's not much room. Usually when I'm cutting hair, my back is almost touching this wall. And so maybe one day I will upgrade to a little bit bigger salon. But for now, this is perfect and I love it. And hopefully you guys love it too. Thanks so much for watching and um, thanks for listening to me ramble on about crazy nothingness. And thanks so much for all of your sharing of my channel and subscribing and for liking my videos and commenting. You guys are awesome. And it's been so fun and we'll see you next time when I do another video tomorrow with my hair. And I'm thinking that I'm going to curl it with that tiny teensy little curling iron that we found because I didn't even remember I had it. And that is going to be awesome. We'll see how I look with curly curly hair like Shirley Temple Afro. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye.